The historic problems that really we've talked about for years almost now uh, it, within VMware are, are still exist, right? We still have the I.O. blender. It still can be hard to manage at times with a legacy system. And, and troubleshooting can be uh, particularly challenging for people. What's interesting is that those problems still exist. And as VMware becomes uh, more embraced and moves you know, deeper into production, we're, it's actually getting worse, not better, right? I mean, one of the big challenges we're starting to deal with now is we're running into uh, uh, environments where the hosts are, are, are supporting two or three times as many virtual machines as they did originally. Um, that now, you know, what I always joke about when we talk about VMware projects is typically you start by virtualizing the kind of the easy stuff, the stuff that if it crashed wasn't going to get you fired anyways. And now we're sort of hitting that, we're kind of into that era of people starting to virtualize things that if they crash, people get in trouble, right? And so Microsoft <laughs> SQL and SharePoint and things like that, right? And so the criticality of what you're virtualizing is much more critical than, than that first wave, so to speak. And this is yeah. still uh, kind of foundationally supported by the fact that most budgets aren't flat. I very rarely run into a an IT uh, administrator that tells me, oh, we have as much money as we need to throw at the problem. Uh, so same question here, Chris. Is, is that is that kind of resonate with what you're seeing in the field? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we can draw a direct correlation to increasing VM density with some of the challenges that we're seeing with our customers who are looking to get off disk-based architectures. Um, the benefit of increasing VM density and then implementing a technology from a storage perspective that allows you to increase your storage density by way of flash density, we're starting to see a lot more um, customers understand the benefits of what a flash architecture can do. Now, there's obviously pros and cons to running a flash-based architecture. The way the actual flash technology in the storage array works is orders of magnitude different than how a disk works. But what we're noticing, especially from an adoption perspective and a roadmap perspective in the storage industry, is we're seeing densities at flash approach eight terabyte flash modules, right? So imagine what you can do in a data center when you're significantly um, increasing density from a compute perspective and then introducing a flash-based technology that's able to give you a storage array in a 3U with fully populated 8 terabyte cards. You could essentially run your entire data center off of that 3U infrastructure.